My name's Connor, I'm a heroin addict. I remember the first time that, that I got high, right? I was in seventh grade, and the plan was to smoke weed and then go to school. One of the friends I was there with, he had a pipe, and uh, they were all hitting it, and I remember hitting it, and nothing happened to me, and I didn't get high. But I remember watching them, and they were having such a good time. I wanted that connection, and I hit the pipe again, and I got high this time. And I remember my mom picked me up after that, and I was all worried, and I could tell, like, she's getting suspicious. The next day, I wake up, and she's like, we're gonna go take a drug test. And I lied to her and we still go take the drug test. I was freaking out for a couple days waiting for the results and they came back negative. She's like, I appreciate you telling the truth and I knew that I lied to her. And so I continued to smoke weed. I think that was seventh grade and drinking and smoking weed became the center of everything that I wanted to do. My grades fell so much that I had to drop out. And my mom's like, you have to go to this military school type thing. And she's like, you have to pass a drug test to go. I kept smoking weed, I kept drinking, and the time came where I had to take this drug test. I failed the drug test that you're supposed to pass, and they let me in anyway. I was like, damn it. But they take me in, and they shave my head and all this stuff, and I ended up doing really well. Immediately after I got out of this program, I kind of fell into hanging out with those same kind of people. They kept going into the bathroom, right, and spending a couple minutes in the bathroom and coming out. Uh, and and I could see a difference in their eyes when they came out, right? And they were falling asleep. I'm like, what are you guys doing? You know, I know you're doing something. You're not just smoking weed. And they're like, well, you know, uh, we're smoking Percocets. So I was like, let me, let me hit some of that. And I just remember like everything kind of falling away. You know what I mean? There wasn't worries. Uh, I didn't really think about too much else besides how good I felt. So I continued to do it, man. I started spending all my money on pills and the consequences came back, right? I started um, failing in school again. I started stealing more and taking all these actions that helped me get high. So at some point, uh, I ran into a few more friends who had graduated from pills and they're smoking something else off of tinfoil. And so, you know, I started smoking heroin and, and the heroin just, just, takes over completely. Immediately, uh, I'm stealing and, and I start going to jail and my family doesn't really talk to me anymore. They know something's going on. I avoid any kind of family outing. I'm not going to birthday parties. I'm not going to, I'm definitely not going to school at this point, right? I start going to jail more often. Those one nights don't turn into one nights anymore. And just experiencing all these consequences and I start shooting heroin and. I did that for about a year and I'm scounding for probation and it doesn't matter what's going on in my life, I'm gonna get out of jail and I'm gonna get high. I remember my mom coming to visit me and, and family friends coming to visit me and high school teachers coming to visit me and, and these people that I didn't even know cared about me this much, they're like, are you gonna get your shit together? You know, I don't wanna get high but you don't understand what it's like to be afraid of yourself, uh, to know that no matter what you do, you're gonna get high again and burn down everything around you. I spend the rest of my time in jail and I get out and I do my best, right? It's about six hours and I find what's left of a wine bottle in the fridge. I finish it off and I get on Facebook immediately and I'm talking to people I shouldn't be talking to immediately and this is just after I told myself that I wasn't gonna associate with these people, I wasn't gonna drink, I wasn't gonna get high and immediately I'm doing all of these things. And so I'm smoking heroin again, right? And all these things are going on in my head, like, you know, they reinstated my probation. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to pass a drug test to save my life. I'm already, I've already drank, smoked weed, and done heroin. My mom had let me back in the house, and I wake up the next morning, and she, you know, she finds a bag right next to me, a bag of heroin and tinfoil. And she's like, get out. You know, immediately she's like, you have to go. I cannot do this anymore. I have tried so many times to help you, to give you consequences, to do whatever I can to help you get sober, and you just shit on me. I just can't stop, you know? There's nothing that's gonna stop me, and she's like, get out. I call a friend of mine, and he's selling heroin at the time, and uh, he picks me up, and, and we go get some acid, right? Because I've got so much going on in my life that I need something else to distract me. So I get acid and we do acid. I was having a good time for a couple hours, right? My problems fell away again. And uh, I start coming off of it. And my friend loads up his spoon 
you know, and I see it and I'm thinking back to that rush. I'm like, load me up one too. I woke up in the hospital. I'm thinking like, I'm gonna go back to jail. I almost died just now. And I don't even care, it doesn't even cross my mind. Uh, I'm just worried about going back to jail. I still have a key to my mom's and somehow I get home and I fall asleep on the couch again. And I wake up to her looking at my, uh, my wrist and I've got a hospital band on and I look like crap. And, and she's like, what happened? And I tell her, you know, I overdosed. And I can tell that she believes that her son is gonna die. Yeah, and there's nothing, absolutely nothing that she can do about it. She's like, you have to call this halfway house and go there. And at this point, I'm like, I'll do whatever it takes to stay sober. So they take me in, and there's probably like 60, 70 other guys at this halfway house, and they're drug addicts and alcoholics, and they get high and they drink the same way that I do. And it was comforting to get that connection and to feel like I wasn't the only one out there. For these people to be sober and happy at the same time, and I'm, I'm seeing this coming in, I'm like, this is crazy. So I did those things. I went to a meeting every day. I got a sponsor. That man is still my sponsor today. I worked the 12 steps with him, and they guide me into having an experience that has given me an incredible life. I have true friends, you know, and I don't have to be afraid of what they think about me. I can go to them with anything, right? I have a connection with a power that's definitely greater than myself, and my life has turned around completely, right? I went from absolutely nothing to having a life that I didn't think I could. Doing normal things, right? Playing basketball with friends, uh, going to movies, uh, sitting and having a real conversation with somebody, you know, going out to dinner for, for celebrations and like just things that I had no idea that people even did. And now I'm a part of it and I, and I have a family in recovery and these, these are people that I can tell anything to. I truly love them and I owe them my life and they kind of lead me into giving back and going back to those places where you went to meetings and you talked to these people that, that helped you out and guided you and led you and being that guide to other people. And so I try to reach my hand out wherever I can and to be someone that can motivate somebody else to want to stay sober and to convey that you can be sober and happy at the same time. I don't experience that constant obsession of I have to get high or I have to not get high. It's just not there. And I've got that connection with a higher power and I have people I can rely on and they love me and I love them more than anything. For someone that's suffering, you just have to do the work and have your own experience and these things aren't difficult. It's writing some stuff down on paper, it's taking actions, it, you know what I mean? Moving your body to go to a meeting. These things are not as hard as we make them in our mind. These thoughts and these crazy things that go on inside of our head, it's not always real. You don't have to be afraid of what these people think of you or, or whatever else. It's a life that comes about because of positive action. You know what I mean? And doing these things can, can increase the value in your life. And you can open up and be honest with people and not have to be afraid and, and, and live a life full of connections with other human beings.